Hello, my name is Viktor Zeder. I am Associate Professor of Radiology and member of the Neurointerventional Service, Interventional Spy Service and Endovascular Service. Today, I'm here to talk about back, leg and arm pain and what we can provide minimally invasive interventions and solutions. The first slide I would like to go through the anatomy of spine column. As you can see, a side view of the spine, we can divide in the cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral spine. As you can see, there are normal cervical, cur cervical curvature, thoracic curvature, lumbar curvature, and the entire spine is, consists of multiple structures. The one important point is that through these holes or spaces, our nerves and spin spinal cord runs in the spinal column and the nerves come out. And indeed, many of the pathologies which cause pain in the arm and leg and back are caused by pressure or pathology of these nerves. Here is a view from the front of a cervical spine. As you can see, the cervical column. And now we have a so-called cross-section looking at these spaces. Here is the column where the cervical uh, spinal cord is and the spaces and areas where the nerves come out. Normal anatomy shows you here intervertebral disc, one of the main points of the, of the disease in the, in the spinal column is the pathology of this disc. I go through more detail. And in these spaces and holes, how the nerves come out in the spinal cord, in the spinal column. Here's one picture of most typical pathologies. One would be a herniated disc. As you can see, herniated disc comes out and has a pressure on the nerves coming out from the spinal column. Or by arthritis and arthrosis for a long time, there could be bone spurs, which create another point of pressure on these nerve structures. Or thickened ligaments, which hold the spinal column, can also create pressure on the nerves and cause back pain. How we diagnose back pain and how we point where the problem is. If the pressure is on the nerves, these nerves, as you know, come out to the body and innervate or, or create the sensory areas on the skin. If patients come to us and complain the particular lines or, or the areas in the arm or leg where we can pinpoint which area it is, we can think of the exact anatomy where the problem can be and target the treatment there. Also, if the nerves which are affecting the motor function, meaning the power and ability to move, we can pinpoint exactly which motion on our physical exam is responsible for which nerve and which area of the problem. So let's step back a little bit. What we can offer for a patient? Our interventional spine service, we create really a comprehensive approach to treatment. First of all, we take accurate clinical history, then we take focus exam, and then we'll correlate the symptoms what patients tell us, how we examine the patient, what we find, for example, as I showed you, we correlate with the findings. We perform CAT scan or MRI, and then develop a plan together with the patient, what would be the next step. Then, if we need to, we can perform so-called selective image-guided treatment. And that's our specialty. We treat patients where we match their symptoms, their problem, their finding with the image. So we can provide image-guided therapy. And then, of course, we'll have patient follow-up. Many times it's for, for many months or years when we follow the patients and treat them when we need to. So what, what are we looking for in the history when a patient comes to us and tells us the story? So first of all, it's the pain. Most of the time it's pain. Or sometimes also added num numbness and weakness. What type of pain patients have? We can try to locate the pain. It's the primary pain that radiates from the back to the leg or to the arm. What's the severity of pain? We have a scale from zero to 10, 10 being the worst pain. What's that scale? When does that pain, severe pain happens? What's the frequency? Is the, patient, is the pain a daily? Is it constant? Does it come in the morning or in the evening? A patient has a pain at night? Does it come with some kind of activity? What's the quality of pain? Is it a pain burning, achy, radiating pain? Some of the types of pain can lead us into thinking, is the pain from the nerve, which I just showed you? Is it the pain created with the nerve pressure? Or is it the pain from the bone or from the ligament? Many times the history will tell us. What are the aggravating factors? Is it a twist or bend? Or if the patient is standing, walking, or sitting? What's the alleviating factors? Sometimes patients tell us once they sit down, pain gets better or when they uh, have a particular motion, patient gets, uh, pain gets better. And obviously, what are the prior interventions? Did the patient get different other uh, uh, interventions, like an epidural injection or acupuncture 
and so on. Did this believe uh, a, some kind of reduction of the pain? And when we review what are the current therapies. So what's the first line of therapy? Again, we try to provide a really a comprehensive treatment. So number one, we always discuss the cons conservative management. Is the rest or modification of the activity can help? We'll advise. We try to help with physical therapy, ultrasound therapy, or massages. Medications are important. Uh, we use muscle relaxants or anti-inflammatory medications or pain medications if need to. Then otherwise, lumbar support and neck colors are very appreciated by the patients and help a lot. And obviously, weight optimization helps for the spine, spine medical problems. So uh, our specialty, as I mentioned, in addition to this, we can offer image-guided treatment and injections. So let me go through a few of the most typical or most frequent uh, problems which patients come with. One would be so-called lumbar cycle pain syndrome caused by herniated disc. So let's step back a little bit to the, to the kind of the anatomy. So here is a side view of the spinal column. And as you can see, in between the vertebrae, you have a so-called disc. The disc by time, uh, by aging, as well as sometimes some by genetic problems, can uh, get diseased, weaken the disc, which is really surrounded by a strong so-called annulus, a fibrotic uh, ring, which holds the disc together, ruptures, and that portion of the disc comes out and comes out in those areas I mentioned to you uh, on the first slides, which are very tight, nerves are there, and as you can see, they have pressure on that nerve. How can we help with that pressure? How can we help to relieve that pain coming from here, that nerve which is under stress and tight space? So the typical complaint patient come concerns is the pain which is so-called axial when you're standing, maybe carrying some weight, that progressively gradually over the day gets worse, by the end of the day is the worst. It can aggravate it by standing or walking, obviously when, when the weight-bearing uh, position is, and may be associated with sudden, sudden severe back spasms caused by this nerve and the area spasming the muscles around the spinal column. Another one would be a so-called lumbar circular pain syndrome caused by spinal canal narrowing. As you can see on the picture, arthritis here caused by many, many years of overgrowth and burn spurs of the bony structures cause pressure because of the narrowing of the canal and those nerves again are on the area of stress and, and, uh, and the pain is caused by those nerves. So interestingly, patients can be pain-free when they're sitting or laying down resting, but comes on rapidly while they ambulate and they have to stop. You have to stop because the pain is so unbearable and sometimes maybe even alleviate the pain by bending over or completely stop any motion. Sometimes the, the vascular pain, meaning pain by narrowing the vessels in the legs, can cause very similar symptoms. However, but patients with the vascular have problem also with the uh, vessels coming down to the legs, whereas patients with the spine problems don't. In other words, we can palpate their vessels very well. So that will be one differentiation. And as I mentioned, it does improve if it comes from the spine by kind of relieving the pressure by stoop position and bending over. So how can we treat? How can we help? Many times patients come with acute pain and need alleviation of this inflammation and the pressure of the nerve. So what we can offer is so-called lumbar epidural steroid injection. It's a treatment of back pain related to the posterior disc herniation, inflammatory degenerative disc disease, or spinal canal stenosis, anything causing pressure on those nerves. Uh, patients tell us, and we know from the studies, published studies, that relief can be from six weeks up to several months, six months or maybe even more. How do we do it? This is a very nice picture depicting this area. So this is from the side view. So you can see the spinal cord. These are the nerves coming out. And the area where we target is inject this medication, which is steroid and numbing medication, in this area uh, where it's on the picture from the side. Obviously, we are not doing it as sitting. We're doing it the laying flat on the table using our X-ray or CAT scan. And I show you how exactly. So what happens is, again, we are targeting the area where the nerve comes out from the spinal column and injecting the steroid medication. The procedure takes very quick, 15 to 20 minutes to perform. And here are a couple of examples. Here is a patient's spinal column laying down on the table on the tummy. Our, our approach is from the back, seeing these so-called holes in the area. We know the nerve lives there, and we come with the needle under guidance of fluoroscopy very precisely and inject the medication. This is the so-called side view, very similar. We check from the front, from the back, so very safe. Until the, under the imaging guidance. 
We can do the same for cervical pain. Many patients with cervical pain for the same etiology of the pain. And you can see again another quick example looking from the front. Here is the area we inject. Many times we inject also contrast to make really sure under the guidance of the imaging that we are in the space where we need to be and then we inject the medications. Again, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to perform. So another one is lumbar sacral pain syndrome because of the nerve pain. And we treat that with so-called nerve block. Very similar approach, very similar approach, very similar medications, but the, but the, the symptomatology is a little bit different. Patients come with complaints of posterior buttock or thigh pain. Remember those dermatoses, pain coming from the back, coming down the side of the leg, back of the leg. By doing that, by taking that history, we can uh, clearly get which nerve it is. The pain is described as sharp shooting, electrical in the nature. It's a nerve pain, aggravated by extension, weight bearing. In other words, if it's you know, standing for a long time or the patient's twisted, kind of shoots the pain down to the buttocks of the leg and may be associated with sudden severe back spasm because the muscles are there and they spasm down. Again, what happens is most of the time this disc, disc is herniated, it ruptures that, that ring which holds it together, comes out and pressures on these nerves as you can see on this picture from the side as I showed you. And this is our target. This is where we go with the needle and inject there. And that's, that's what we call nerve block. Again, this is a little bit of uh, model showing this spinal column, the nerves coming out, so you can you can exactly imagine how we can come to it very close to it, not to the nerve, very close to the nerve, and we see the nerve, so that's where we inject. So maybe we may target ventral structures, meaning from the front, more effectively than the dorsal approach, which I showed you before, dorsal meaning from the back, we go from the kind of the front side. And here is again an example of the picture, how we go to that foramen, where it's kind of tight, where the nerve is tight, because of the disc comes out and we inject there. This is exact example of the lumbar area, lower back. As you can see, some patients have multiple areas, like this patient is actually three, three the herniated disc pushing on the nerve, and we go with one, two, three needles, same time of the procedure, 15 to 20 minutes, come to the spot where we guide by the imaging, we know it, we inject actually contrast to make sure we are close to the nerve, as you can, as depicted on this L4, L5, S1 nerve on the lower back, and really by studies, 87% of patients receive relief up to three months, and this can be repeated. Another example, very similar approach is cervical nerve block. Again, you can see these openings, these holes between the bones where the nerves come out. We know the nerve is there. That's the area where the nerve is pinched. And this is the injection with the contrast. We know we're in the same spot, in the spot where we need to be, and we inject the medication. Now, for more complicated anatomy, patients who have a spinal column which is more diseased, we can use CT-guided nerve block. It's even more precise because we see a little bit more detail. We can see the bones, we can see actually the nerves or large arteries. And a very similar approach, we de define the anatomy and with the, you can see the needle coming down exactly to the spot. We stop, we take a picture and inject there. So it's a direct visualization. We can see actually even the vessels to so avoid, as you can imagine on the neck, we have a carotid artery, jugular vein, uh, dangerous area with the cats can be precisely can see. We can precisely target within the so-called foramen, which I mentioned the foramen is that hole in the spinal column where the nerve comes out, that's where we want to be. So it's ideal for self-degenerative or post-operative anatomy patients with complex spinal structures and appropriate for cases where this routine fluoroscopy, what I mentioned, showed you before, is not so precise. CT guided nerve blocks, more examples. Here is a lower back, S1 nerve, as you can see, you have pelvic bone, we have the spinal column, and really actually you can see down here is the nerve on the, on the one side and the other side, we can exactly with the needle coming very close to it and we don't inject until we are precisely there and inject the medication, very safe procedure. Uh, we can, you know, as I mentioned, is as a disturbed anatomy, we can see it, we can avoid the lung in the upper spinal area very well. So let me finish with a more uh, detailed picture how we precisely uh, go about it. So we take the history, we examine the patient, we get the imaging and we match everything together. Like in this patient, patient which did recently, you can see lower back pain. Here is the side view on the MRI, having a herniated disc. You can see between the two bones, vertebral bones, L5, S1. The disc is coming out, pressing on the nerves here. Patient comes with pain, S1, uh, lower spinal S1, sacral nerve. Uh, here is the cross-sectional imaging. You can see again herniated disc, multiple images we confirm, and then we proceed. In this area, we go with CAT scan. Now you can compare this a CAT scan, basically patient laying on the tummy, and we approach from the back. Here is the back area, 
this is the area. And as you can see, we can identify the nerve. That's the way the pain is. We're coming in the needle. So the patient is coming in and the scan out in and each time when we go more one centimeter by centimeter the image, we wanna make sure where we are. And as you can see sequentially how the needle goes in, goes in even more. And here, perfectly, beautifully close to the nerve, you should actually see the medication injected that little black area is the medication injected to the nerve. So overall, our conclusion, what we can offer is these techniques provide an intermediate step in the continuum of this comprehensive spinal care, conservative management plus of injections, maybe to avoid or get you through the uh, intensive pain period, uh, maybe even avoid surgery. Again, surgery is the final solution if needed to be removed at disc, remove the area, but hopefully we can help through that. In properly selected patients, some of these minimally invasive procedures under fluoroscopy or CT guidance, uh, we can perform successfully to sometimes even diagnose if the injection helps, then we know that's the nerve, or actually treat with a wide range of these disorders which I showed you. Hopefully this was helpful. Please give us a call if you need attention from us. Thank you.